Well, President Obama has been making the rounds in Africa, speaking at various events and addressing a multitude of issues. And in almost every speech he's given, he's taken the time to praise Nelson Mandela, the former anti-apartheid revolutionary who eventually became South Africa's first black president. Unsurprisingly, the corporate media has jumped on the rhetoric. To South Africa now, where President Obama has made a point of honoring Nelson Mandela's legacy at every point on his trip. Today, he called it an honor and a privilege to tour Robben Island, where Mandela was imprisoned for so many years. The president is expected to highlight Mandela's legacy and point to him as an example of bringing about changes once thought impossible. I expect him to talk about the impact that Nelson Mandela has had on his life. That's right. Apparently, Obama's always considered Mandela a personal hero. Check out what he had to say about him during his most recent speech in South Africa. Now, some of you may be aware of this, but I actually took my first step into political life because of South Africa. And I knew that while brave people were imprisoned just off these shores on Robben Island, my own government in the United States was not standing on their side. And that's why I got involved in what was known as the divestment movement in the United States. It was the first time I ever attached myself to a cause. You heard that right, folks. A young Barack Obama cared so much about justice in South Africa that it actually drove him to get into politics. What a moving tribute. Too bad I ain't buying it. See if Obama's empty words actually held water. He would be standing on the right side of history, the side that Nelson Mandela has always stood on. As a young South African living under full apartheid, Mandela became involved in anti-colonial politics that worked to dismantle the oppressive system of institutionalized racism. In 1962, Mandela was convicted of sabotage and conspiracy and sentenced to life in prison as a political dissident. This was a man who fought against corruption and oppression, even if it meant landing him in jail for the rest of his life. And then there's Obama, a man who's presided over a system of oppression, one that criminalizes dissent. Under Obama, those who expose corruption are silenced, labeled as traitors or terrorists. In fact, for decades, Nelson Mandela was officially labeled a terrorist in this country. He was on the terror watch list all the way up until 2008. And you know, it's quite interesting that Obama went to the prison in Robben Island where Mandela spent 18 years of his life for pensive reflection, where he called the jail a symbol of injustice. I wonder if during that time in the empty cell, Obama considered the inhumane imprisonment of the 166 men who are currently in prison at Guantanamo Bay, being tortured, force-fed, all held without trial and with no end in sight. But Obama's hypocritical rhetoric about looking up to a man who represents everything he's not doesn't come without a sense of irony. You see, perhaps the most offensive part of Obama's audacious claim that it was South African apartheid which inspired him to become a politician is this. Obama currently supports apartheid. A system that gives racial discrimination legitimacy is alive and well in a little country called Israel. And every year, $3 billion of taxpayer money is used to sponsor Israel's apartheid state and oppression against the Palestinians. So, Obama, save your preaching for the blind, because the only similarity that you share with Nelson Mandela is your African descent. Because when it comes to everything that's right, you couldn't be more wrong.